Welcome back to Human Humane Architecture here from Honolulu, Hawaii, back in paradise. And uh, I'm talking back, I'm back, and I'm physically back because thanks to Tropical Tutor Bill, I was on sabbatical for the past eight months uh, in my homeland in Germany. So I'm now back in studio. And if we can get my dear friend and co-host and host and guest and all of that and more, <laughs> who was keeping the show running over the sabbatical from being physical here. And I should squeeze you and you should make I'm, some ouch. sounds so people I'm, don't I'm, think yes. I'm still... No, because, because we had months of uh, Martin talking to us uh, from Germany mm -hmm. via electronics mm -hmm. with his folding background that he had to learn how to fold and unfold. Um, <laughs> and now he's actually here. It's, and thanks, so you know, and Rob does all the work. Thank you. It's like, it's yes, paradise it's, again it's, for it's me in, again. in multiple ways. Yes. And last time we were so excited about you know, reporting about um, wrapping up from over there that yeah. something happened to us that never happened before. Correct. We didn't make it through the show, that's but right. we said that's it's a good thing. So we decided <laughs> to basically finish up with what we didn't. Right. So let's go to the first slide here that shows that you were surprised and I was caught up between the Garanien, how we call these flowers, and the oh, Bumerias yeah, yeah, yeah. here, yeah. you know, or yeah. the hibiscus that's on the VW bus. And so what we did is good. Let's go to the next slide. Um, we um, drove to a place, virtually to a place where friends of us, friends of Suzanne, live in the outskirts of Zurich. Mm -hmm. And it's a little town of 1,700 people mm -hmm. only. Mm -hmm. And there is a commuter train or light rail going out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thought this is maybe worth to learn for yes. us uh, yes. planning and actually doing the same thing with the light rail going out west. Right. And what people call the transit-oriented development, and yes. we say let's have some transit-oriented discussions. Yes. Correct. So, so this is uh, basically the the final station uh, there, and you would uh, the the picture at the bottom, and you wouldn't think, well, this this looks like uh, this looks big, right? Fairly correct. too big, yeah, too flamboyant for yeah. such a small town, but it's obviously built in anticipation of growth, right? right? So right. this will, right. and we will see that in a couple of slides, yeah. And what would you see? What would we see at the top? Well, what we've got, and and Rob, you can come back to the studio for me to show off this book. This is a book that is entitled Destination Architecture: The Essential Guide to One Thousand Contemporary Buildings. It is available in the uh, Barnes and Noble Bookstore at Alamoana Center, which we will see when we go back to the slide. But before I do that, I will show a relevant page here because this picture right here is of a small train station that was designed by your family's company and it's in a small town in germany so it's not a very big flamboyant station as you were just saying uh, and this is for an underground station as opposed to an at grade station but it is a very elegant building Thank and you. if we go back to that slide so that's what we're seeing here um, and what you were saying is why should we not have elegant buildings for our transit system yeah, as well? yeah. so we urge the community, the architectural and the developer community make every station on the hard line, one that's internationally recognized and published, Correct. because if Martin and family can do it, you can do it, you right? Do it that's our message. That's right. So let's go to the next uh, slide here, because why our friends, uh, pretty much uh, Ollie and Cordy and her two kids moved out there is because they couldn't make it economically anymore in, in Zurich, in, in Zurich. downtown Zurich. So they moved out there because it was supposedly cheaper there. And, um, and you also had to have, and they had, these sort of uh, social infrastructure. Correct. We can see, what else do we see in here? Well, there's also a small grocery store right there mm -hmm. on the right that's called a Spar. And what we see in the upper left corner is the grocery store that your family company designed in a different place in Germany. But what you pointed out is that there is seating developed there. There's seating in the front of the building, and it's under the canopy of the front of the building. It's actually incorporated, smuggled in, because my client was a very thrifty guy, and he said, I don't have any money for a bench. And I said, well, never mind. So We're then he do it found anyway. himself seeing it. He said, well, people sit in my building. And I said, oh, really? So again, <laughs> what, I, what we're saying is the budget or the typology, might it be small or profane, it's not an excuse to That's not right. make ambitious architecture. Right? right? So we want to see that along the heart line as right, well. Right. Hard line, the hard line. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> so next uh, picture here is the grocery store again, um, here in its entirety at the very bottom. And again, it's a very modern building, so um, we don't want to see any hula skirt buildings here. No. 
that want to pretend to be no. uh, pretty much free contact. No. We want to continue at its best of Oahu and Honolulu, which was post-contact and which was mid-century. And yeah. we have uh, an event coming up that you are part of, which Correct. is the National Docomomo Symposium. Right. And that's what many people in the scene and in the community consider us the best in the country and not in the world. So right. we better pick up from there right. and evolve that. Right. That's our message. Right? right, right. And you pointed out in the pictures at the top, there's the picture of the interior of that store, the Spar store. But the picture on the upper right is from your family's, another one of, one of your family's um, instructions. And there again is somebody taking his leisure. You pointed out that this is a homeless person or a houseless person. He is able to drink beer openly because it's Germany, not mm -hmm. the United States. But you're saying making accommodation for people is what part of architecture should be doing. Yeah, and we don't want it to be out there another exclusive ghetto or right. you know of right. some sort. Um, it is. It will. It, it has to be cheaper out there. That has traditionally been the reason for going mm -hmm. out west, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you will also these people will follow, mm -hmm. and you better include them you know, better than we're doing here in our urban core, right? right? Let's move on to the next here. What else do we need to Soto in a robust Well, in, in a, obviously in a, in a community, you need schools too, mm -hmm. because you're gonna have kids. And so in the upper left is a school that uh, your, your family company designed. And uh, what's going on? I can't remember. There, that's well, Suzanne. Well, the, the, the bottom one is in, in that Correct. community. In, in the outskirts, community, And they right. fenced it in, and we opted after long discussions not to do that. There right. is a bench again. There is a canopy. There is shade. So you want to be ex inclusive versus ex exclusive, and you want to be welcoming. Right. So next slide. And at the end, what you, of course, need, which you already saw in the background of the previous one, is housing. Right. And we were talking that this is that sort of height. Uh, this is what most people here think of what's going to happen along uh, transit-oriented development along Hart, which is not high-rise buildings, not primarily or not immediately, mm -hmm. maybe down the line, but it's also hopefully not sprawling single-family houses exactly. anymore. Right? right, 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 right. So what we see here, and this is very typical of Europe too, if I may say so, having never been to Europe myself, You're but right. there's a lot of four to five story mm -hmm. residential structures. Mm -hmm. That's what you mm -hmm. lived in as yeah. when you were a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. That's much more typical of urban areas in Europe as well as the older cities of the mm -hmm. United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Honolulu doesn't have that because we grew primarily during the automobile yeah. age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is something that we hope to see. The building in the upper left corner, again, is one of your family's buildings mm -hmm. that's uh, looks out into the trees, which mm -hmm. we're about mm -hmm. to see in the next mm -hmm. picture. And in the upper right, we go back to our container, shipping container which development. We're, which we're proposing, because that might be a cheap way to do it, but also maybe a, an interesting way to do mm -hmm. it. You can stack them even higher, because that's yeah. how they're stacked on they the ship. They are structurally made to be able to stack. And then comes something next that surprises you, or is, is worth sort of provoking. Next slide, please. Right. Well, this is the crazy thing. The, this is a building in Germany that has a lanai that's bigger than anything we have here. And the point being that it's only usable comfortably for maybe three months of the year, whereas mm -hmm. our lanais are usable 20, mm -hmm. 12 months of mm -hmm. the year. Mm -hmm. Your picture in the upper right, left corner is, again, the treetop development that looks out into the trees. In Germany, of course, the trees lose their leaves mm -hmm. for a long period of time, but that allows the sun in, yeah. which, which is what you want for, for heating. Yeah. Here, a similar development, you'd be looking out in yeah, yeah, yeah. to greenery yeah. all the time. And at the top right, we went have one of the Primitiva suggestions here. And we're saying, you know, it, it should be a code requirement here in Hawaii to make yeah. like 30% of your square footage a lanai. Yeah. I mean, this is the lanai headquarter in the world, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you shouldn't have more lanais in, in Zurich or in, in the outskirts of Zurich yeah, than here. Yeah, this isn't right? Germany, this is in Switzerland, but the same exactly. thing, it's still cold. Exactly. So next slide here. Uh, along that line here, you have uh, older developments of that range and new developments, and we've been making some suggestions of how densifying the urban fabric here and retrofitting others. So go to the next slide. Um, while um, this is the end of the line, this is Oli and Cordy's house at the very bottom. It's a very nice 70s uh, passive solar house, very sort of low key. And at the top left, uh, I took this picture when, when Brad picked me up to get uh, our private investigating vehicle back. 
And this is in, 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 in uh, you know, back in family, we were joking about how to pronounce uh, Kabule, <laughs> yeah. and we were saying uh, Carpool A. Yes. So uh, this is on Carpool A Road um, uh, H1, and we're seeing higher, uh, um, uh, you know, more, more high riser or mid rise development along that one. But we were saying, hey, wait a minute, you know, maybe. The way this looks like if you get closer, and you drove up closer, and you yeah. saw it's an office building. Correct. But it doesn't appeal as have anything to do with primitivo or jungleism no. or something. You would no. suggest, hey, maybe reconsider when you built there. That's right. Maybe you built in a different way mm -hmm. that recognizes more it's actually countryside out Correct. there, right? Right. Next slide. This is from Oli and Cordy's house, and you get this sort of, they're still out there, and it's yet waits to be densified, and they look at that train. And it reminded us of the heydays here. Top left is that book that has, shows Kalakaua when it was still the palm grove, and they cut the artery for the streetcar through, or the Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center, which we liked in its mm -hmm. original condition with its approach to be the uh, non-object um, right. as, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, the... Uh, our, uh, the Japanese architect um, uh, Kengo Kuma called it once. You know, mm -hmm. you, you want to you want to camouflage right. and, and make the architecture invisible versus it right. being in your face. So maybe that would be a strategy for out there keep the country country that yet functionally got to densify, but maybe aesthetically and visually you want to make it more disappear Correct. and being more nature than right. than than building. Than building right. And next slide. Um, here again, thanking our hosts. Uh, you can see up there atop uh, around their house from the Alpine Silhouette, and this is Lake Zurich. And next slide, we ended last show and saying, hey, don't, we shouldn't be too full of ourselves yeah. here and because thinking we're the only ones who have waterfalls and rainbows because other countries, cultures have that as well. Yes. And that gets us to the next slide uh, because I ended going back uh, for the last couple of weeks um, to further north to the further foothills of the Alps back in Germany. This is in the Munich area here. This and, and it, sh it pr shows, proudly shows that we have rainbows there too, even mm -hmm. in the urban area. Right. So then it looks like I came back and next slide. And I was happy to be at one of the last uh, remaining movie uh, drive through or drive in theaters here on Oahu, right? The no, 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 no. And I know that's not true because I look at the license plates of those two cars uh -oh. and those are not Hawaiian license uh -oh. plates. This in fact is in Germany. There's a DeLorean on the left. It looks like it came from Back to the Future mm -hmm. and a, an old American pickup truck on the right. And you said you've got your, what's that, your Renault or your Citroën? Yeah, that's a Renault, that tiny little, this is yeah. our uh, European PI-ing uh, yeah. car. Yeah. And Suzanne there, and we were watching a movie. Next slide. And, you know, we went into that little concession building there, up there, and, and get, get some drinks. And they had uh, a poster of one of the movies they were showing was... Uh, with local boy Dwayne Johnson, who mm -hmm. married yesterday, who just got married right, right here, here in the Hawaiian the Islands. Island. Exactly. Yes, yes. So uh, it was fast and the furious, but at the at the bottom you can yeah. see <laughs> slow and hilarious for uh, this uh, wagon thing that's drawn by a by a tractor, and you can have these uh, girls' night out party there going on <laughs> and, and watching the movie, and obviously enjoying The Rock, right? right. As the, I think, uh, being it, elected yeah. the sexiest man on Earth. That, apparently, like that's that, what right? they're there to see, right? But w as a lesson at the top left, it's hard to see, but I tell you, a Coke was two euros, 20 cents, and more preferably, what everyone in Bavaria drinks, which is beer, <laughs> is only two fifty, and we're talking uh, the the uh, the half a liter. So this it's is like a, the half mass. It's a big big mug, right? Big thing. So why don't we put back a movie theater, a drive-through back in Kapolei, yeah. and and subsidize beer or whatever? Mai Tai is the local <laughs> version of that. You know, ideas like that because you gotta. You got to make it attractive in a more inclusive way. We're and as saying, you pointed out, right? there's still empty space out there that could accommodate exactly. a drive-in exactly. movie theater. Yeah, right? yeah. So let's move on to the next one because we have beautiful sunsets there too. Mm -hmm. And what is a little hard to notice, but I tell you, at the very left left of that little forest chunk there is a tower, and that tower belongs to the next slide, please. The place we spent Christmas Eve. This was the craziest fireworks, and we mm -hmm. have fireworks here every. Friday in Waikiki, yeah, yeah. but that's nothing compared to, this is on a hill, you can oversee entire Munich, it was crazy, 
uh, it, it felt like you're trampled to death, and but we survived it. But what you can see there is one of the most, because the question is, what kind of architecture make you in the yeah. outskirts of the city? Here in 1972, next slide, they made one of the best pieces of architecture ever. Uh, this is the Olympic Center in 1972. Uh, on the left, it's engineer Fry Otto, who uh, at the top right, Tropical Rockwood, is its uh, utmost fan and expert. So if you don't want to know more details, uh, turn to him. And I took the pictures next to David just, just recently, and it looks like brand new. What they added is the spectacle that you can sort of do a, 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 a rooftop tour so you can walk on these artificial mountains. Yeah, it's on these like you're tents. mountain climbing. It's great. And while, you know, at, in, in the bottom in the middle, there was this tragic event of the attacks yes. in there, but um, mostly the place is remembered for what the engineer and the architect, uh, Günther Benisch, uh, anticipated. And in, in, in what you said, you know, is uh, overcome the trauma of yeah. the war and of that dark era of my home country. Correct. And basically demonstrate yourself as a young, having learned yes. uh, a democratic society, and yes. the architecture is embodying that, Correct. right? Right. And and that hill we went to uh, reappears here at daytime, and and that was fascinating for you. Yes. What that is made of, right? Absolutely. And I conjectured: is this one of the hills that was made? It's an artificial hill. Mm -hmm. It is made of rubble or debris generated by the bombing raids of World War II. Mm -hmm. And because Germany had so many stone buildings and masonry buildings and brick buildings, yeah. when all those buildings were destroyed, they had to do something with all, the, all mm -hmm. of those chunks of rock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they turned them into yeah. artificial hills in yeah. parks. Exactly. And that's what that is. So our mandate for here is if you're gonna do some kind of event architecture out there, which you know they, they're yeah. thinking about you know, redoing the arena, mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. stadium out there mm -hmm. because it's rusting away. They're redoing mm -hmm. the, the Blaisdell. Yep. And we're saying, guys, then this is the level right. of sophistication yep. of engineering that you got to achieve. And by the way, David is opting for that we should have more tensile structures here because yeah. here with no snow loads and stuff like yeah. that, right. and with a jungle as a, as a natural uh, sort of a... Uh, a, uh, a, ben a mentor, Tarzan-like, this might really be a, a, a way to think. So again, turn to David when you want to know yeah. more or when you do something like that. So let's go to the next slide and, and, and fly back because I was on the airplane with a Star Alliance partner, United Airlines, and watch, enjoying some movies. And this one is called The Aftermath. And it deals with the exact mm -hmm. period you were just talking about. Correct. And here at the bottom, you see the... They were called rubble women. Exactly. And they were women who, in Germany, received payment in the form of extra food rations mm -hmm. to go through the debris, to sort it, yeah. to separate out the yeah. things that could be reused, yeah. and the rest of it got dumped to make, mm -hmm. as we saw, that mm -hmm. artificial hill. And the movie, next page here, is, is really interesting because it plays in... And it makes me now coming back aware of my two nationalities because I'm proud American as well for mm -hmm. some two years. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't be a proud German if it wouldn't have been for you and us proud Americans because you helped us back on our yeah. feet after we screwed yeah. up. Yeah. And it was not just Americans, but Russians and, and British as well. Yeah. And this plays in the, in the British district here. And a, an officer with his wife comes and, and occupies a German's house and the Germans have to move into the attic and then, and, and it perfectly portrays the sort of shift from yes. the past, the history embodied yes. by the old house and the old furniture and this yes. drifting away to modernism Correct. and modernism. And, and he is this architect and designs this Mies van der Rohe-like yeah. clean building and these drawings and that very romantic scene at the very bottom right when they both start to have an affair and they're in bed and he sort of gestually writes or oh. de designs uh -huh. or, or draws the uh, verbally on, on and her physically body. on her body. Yeah. It's, it's very romantic. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And so so we what does this have to do with Honolulu? Again, we're 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 having this sort of boom, this sort of little yeah. building boom along the heart line. We will. So uh, again, Docomomo Symposium, there is this legacy of mid-century modern. Mm -hmm. Uh, this has to be continued, this has to be evolved, yep. right? Yes. And no sort of kitsch, uh, again, hula skirt, Hawaiiana stuff exactly. that we have exactly. enough of. You know, because the heart is not primarily not for tourists, right? This Correct. is for people who are struggling to make a living on the island. That's right. So you've got to be real and serious and mm -hmm. not fake, right? Right, in no, that, it's not in Disneyland. That, in that case, exactly. So let's go to the... Uh, 
to the next slide that was from my, oh, well, this one first, I have to, I got my, uh, our uh, private investigating car back. Uh, it's the same brand as the end of the scene of the movie here, which shows the Mercedes star. So thanks to Jay Mormon and Brad Segikawa here, we got our car back ever since it got unmumuted. And it's easy breezy. That's right. We're gonna we, we're gonna make sure uh, we're gonna say we only use it once a week for the show uh -huh. day, and then do groceries and stuff around it. Otherwise, we're gonna use public transportation. There you go. The next slide shows because that was on my way back to the <laughs> airport. And what can, what surprised you about that one? Well, this is a picture inside this commuter train that's mm -hmm. going from Munich to the airport. Yeah, correct? exactly. And in the distance on the other side of the train, that guy with the headphones is holding an object. And that object is a skateboard. And if you look to the right, the close-up view of the logo on the skateboard is the Hawaiian Islands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, this is in Munich, Germany. Yeah. What on earth? Yeah, it even says Jockeys Hawaii. We were looking this up, and we were sure in the skateboard scene he's known. We are not in that scene, so we don't right, know. Right, right. It's obviously uh, the guy is showing, demonstrating his sympathy with a place <laughs> far away, half around the world. Yes, sir. So we can see, obviously, that uh, with the world having opened up, yeah. exoticism goes both ways, right? It does. There are it does. things that you're obsessed about, and this is why yeah. we always like to work with each other, yeah, because yeah, yeah. we're interested in each other's strange exactly. world. Exactly. And explaining yeah. that yeah, to yeah, each yeah. other. And because these worlds are meeting, right? It's not like yes. way back where you heard of oh, them. Oh, no, but, exactly. But throughout, they're, they're confronting each other, Absolutely. you know, literally and figuratively. And, and as well, you know, with technology at the very top right, because this is, again, um, we had a very long, cold winter. So I was happy to be inside this hermeticized thing yeah. and bundled up and stay warm. But now we had some heat waves, as you heard, 100 oh degrees. God. Yeah, it was terrible. So they were like air conditioning that thing. And the same kind of train the hard people bought from Italy and at the very top uh, right, the second from the right, is that train. Yeah. And we're saying, why is it not what it used to be, which we see on the top right, mm -hmm. which, is an, which is an easy breezy street car, Absolutely. right? Which is recognizing our special condition that we never have freezing conditions. That's right. So why in the world are we importing an invasive train, an invasive beast, that we then, because somehow feel bad about it, we draw a wave on to make it look exotic, right? But that's rather silly. Yes. And we were talking about the yeah. advantage of homegrown, right? right. Because you make right. something locally, it just makes sense because you think about it. Well, you almost have no other chance. And that, right? in fact, is what happened in the days of the Honolulu Rapid Transit Company mm -hmm. that ran the streetcar line. They did, in fact, of course, they did buy a lot of stuff from yeah, yeah. mainland manufacturers, mm -hmm. but. They manufactured and made their own cars as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So there was a sensibility of keeping things open. Mm -hmm. And there was no air conditioning in those yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. had to have windows yeah. that would open, yeah. otherwise yeah. you'd boil to death. Yeah. And you were talking about the heart. You know, it, it goes, it, I mean, the travel time is... Is, is decent, right? Very much. But it's not like a TGV or like a Shinkansen train or no. like an ICE in Germany no. that goes super fast. No. So you couldn't open the window, right? Yeah. And again, in like if it ever, uh, hopefully, will also extend from the airport to the urban area. Yes, it will. And eventually to the university. Yes. You know, that's when mo all the people, including me, who came here, the first thing you recognize as being so intriguing and you never forget is the smell. Yes. Is the, that's right. This, the rich that's right. tropical that's smell. That's exactly the right. The scent of plumeria yep. and of And you get hibiscus. off the plane and that's the first exactly. thing you, you feel. And, and, and the original airport architecture by the yep. architect of your house and home. Yes, Osipov. was recognizing that. That's right. But then you get into a hermetic train, you yeah. know, and you lose that, and you're disconnected from that. That's right. So that doesn't seem like right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Correct. So um, right. it gets us to, and what do we know it gets us to the next slide, because what do we know, but here's a person who knows, because she's trained in that area, right. and that's tropical tourist expert Suzanne, who we want to maybe rename or rephrase as the exotic escapism expert, Suzanne, <laughs> who is saying exactly that. Dwell upon your, the term that comes from her discipline, your unique selling yes. proposition. Yes. And having a 12-month uh, perfect thermal comfort season is the thing to do. But then you want to embrace that all the time with easy breezy, uh, 
you know, vehicles and easy breezy ventilation for buildings and, and all these things. And one thing she throws in, and I have to translate, usually I make you do your wiki. No, no, lesson, I, I can't do this one. I do this because I'm here. So, yes, yes. So this on the left side is a, is a screenshot of, of an info, uh, of a sort of a, a news came through that says that many of these little uh, towns in the outskirts are, are eager and hungry and thrive to be connected to public transportation. Yeah. But the downside is then prices of real estate of go course. up immediately. So we were talking about, you know, it's great to develop around these transit oriented developments that when people, whenever people say that, you gotta be careful yeah. where they come from because mm -hmm. if they come from the capitalized versus the cultural corner, you know, it's about money making. And then once again, maybe people who, you know, originally moved out to afford something, maybe they can't afford. So we need right. radical new models. That's what Suzanne is saying. Um, and, and, and you need to, you know, at least incorporate a cultural, cultural approach to the commercial one, which you of, of course will always yeah. have when you develop. Yeah, you know? of course. So right. uh, to yeah. that degree. And, and again, while we're getting to the end of the show and we had a little bit more time and now we made it again, which we'll promise to do for yeah, the, from now the on. future from yes, now on again. Yes, yes. But we want to close up with, which is also the, the, uh, the, the permanent background here, because the question is, why is this all relevant, what right. we're talking about, and why the right. hell, you know, Zurich and Munich is exactly. so far away. Right. But, but there is a reality here that, that you're facing and you're were visiting that with your family, with your mother and sister, and yes. what do they? What did they communicate? Well, this is a this is a, a storefront in a shopping center in Kapolei, which is called uh, Kamakana Ali, and it's about the heart line. It's about the train line, and you can see right in the center, limited passenger service begins fall 2020, mm. and that probably is going to mean from the termination at West Oahu College campus, just as far as the stadium. Yeah, yeah. But that means that this is happening. That mm -hmm. means this is yeah, real, yeah. and it isn't just theoretical yeah. anymore. Yeah. And we are going to be seeing the things that we've talked about. The development at the train station mm -hmm. is going to be a reality, yeah. and that's what we've got to be facing and thinking about. Exactly. And so with that, um, we urge or we encourage the audience to maybe think about one or the other mm -hmm. of the things that we learned from mm -hmm. uh, a community half around the world that had right. si you know, similar situations and conditions. And so we expect talk, you know, cutting edge and top notch evolved Hawaii yes. architecture along the hard line yeah. because that's what we, we owe deserve. everyone and right. what it deserves and we all. Right. And so from that's we're at the end of the show. We're going to use our sort of refreshed view to look at some of the island developments in a little bit more cleared way. So okay. we'll do that next time. Also as a fringe benefit on the side for me to cure my going along with that, my post sabbatical stress disorder, which I have when I look at some of the stuff that has happened in between. Yeah. But it will be as always in a humorous and constructively critical way. Right. So thanks for watching, and until then, stay uh, tropically exotic. Bye-bye. <laughs>